Hey guys, Adam back out here in the shop. I got a fun little project today, so I thought I'd get the camera back out since it's been a while. I'm uh, gonna bend up these C channels. Got a pile of flats here. And I apologize that I have not been on YouTube as often. I kinda had my truck stolen and all my gear, so I lost all my footage, but we got everything back now. I am literally trying to remember how to use this camera, so bear with me. I'm gonna try and get more of this stuff out, uh, get you guys some more press break videos, some more tooling. I've got all kinds of fun stuff. I've got some new tooling in, some finger dies, some roll of V stuff. We'll work those into some other episodes. But I'm gonna show you guys how to set up the press for this 14 gauge sheet metal job and hope you enjoy. All right, first things first, we're bending 14 gauge, so I'm gonna show you how to select your V size. Uh, and by that, I mean your lower mold on the press brake is a four-way die set. It has a whole bunch of V cutouts in it. And I'm gonna show you on this chart that comes on the press brake how that works. So we are gonna be bending 14 gauge, which is 075 thickness, and we're gonna take that and run right over here, and it's gonna show this 4.7. You wanna, you wanna run that, your gauge, over to this diagonal line. So you're gonna see this 14 gauge over to 4.7. Now you're gonna come up here and you'll see that says 5 eighths. Now what that means is your 5 eighths wide V from the top of the points of the V on the press tooling, you're gonna select the 5 eighths wide one. And that is gonna relate to 4.7 tons per foot of width. So if we put a foot wide part in here, it's gonna take 4.7 tons of pressure to bend that piece of 14 gauge steel. Now there's different, different materials on here. You've got soft brass, aluminum, etc., and it shows you how to adjust that, but this is for your standard mild steel. So again, 14 gauge over the 4.7, and then up 5 eighths. So I've already got that. I've got my 5 eighths die set in the brake, and now we're gonna power it up. It's gonna get a little loud, so I thought I'd do this with the sound off. But that's how you select your die for, for every gauge. You go in here and you, you find you have quarter inch. You're gonna take that. You're gonna run it right over here. It's gonna say 15.5, two inch. So that's gonna require 15.5 tons of force with a two inch V. Now you can change that. The biggest, the biggest V that this one comes with is a two inch. But if you had larger, if you put a different, some different tooling in here, you can come in here and, and see that as you get wider, the tonnage changes. So you could put, you could put a three inch die in here and get 8.9 tons only instead of 15.5. But now you're also limiting how short your, your shortest flange can be on the sheet metal. So you wanna keep that in mind and you're gonna be changing the bend radius. When you use this diagonal, you're gonna be getting the correct bend radius for that material as opposed to if you use a really large V with, with thin material, you're gonna get a very wide bend radius instead of that nice tight, that tight radius that we, we want. It should basically, the radius should about match the material. So that's how I do everything. If you draw it in a program like SolidWorks, sheet metal, I just make my, my, uh, my bend radius match material thickness and using that, I get in within thousandths of an inch when, I'm, when I really got this thing dialed in for a job. So that is, that is key. Die selection is key and that's why this press brake, it's kind of nice that it comes with this big universal. No, you can't get into these really strange parts with it, but 
you can just buy different tooling and adapt it to your machine and make that work. So don't get frustrated that it comes with the scrape egg die that you can't get parts with side flanges in and etc. This die is actually pretty awesome for general use, making C channels, making three-sided pans, making angles, making all kinds of parts. This is of all this tooling that I have, I use the stock tooling a lot more than I'm getting out all the fancy tooling. So it really does help have that that all your setups, all your different V setups in one spot and you can just flip that. It's got little chains on the side that you wrap around the ram here and you can just pull that up, spin it and real quick you can change for materials because you want to use the right V size for your material. You don't want to use a one inch V for everything. That's for eighth inch, you know. You don't want to, you know, come in here. See, eighth inch 120, seven and a half tons, one inch. You don't want to use that for three sixteenths and quarter inch. You can get away with cheating it sometimes, but you really should just go by the recommended air bending chart. It'll be on the front of your machine. If you don't have one, you can go online and download one, print it, slap it on your press brake. It's the best thing to have. It is like the press brake Bible. So that's a, that's a really good one. And I'll show you how to set up the controls now. It's gonna get a little louder. All right, we're gonna turn the press brake on. Hopefully you can still hear me. Turn the key on, let everything come on, hit the button. And we're in single mode right now. So we're in single mode. I found the numbers that I like to hit the length and angle on these parts. So these are the part, these are the numbers that I found that I like. So I made a program so that I don't have to bend this bend and then this bend and then put the part down and run the whole thing and then come back and grab it again and run it through to get the second and the third and fourth bend. We're gonna do we're gonna do bend one, bend two, bend bend three, and bend four. That's the order we're gonna go in and I'm gonna show you how to do that here. We're gonna hit the P, it's gonna change from single to programs. And I wrote this over on program five. You've got 40 programs on this machine with up to like 20 something bends a piece, I think. So it brings you into this guy. I have four bends, so I set that up. My HT, I'll show you that over here. Back on single, I always leave my HT at 2.00. That is the, I call it hold time. Once the press brake goes into bending speed, which is when it slows down, that is how long it holds it in that speed for. What these do is they come and it'll move down very quickly and then you'll see it slow down. By doing that, we are setting that here with this top adjuster and that controls when this comes into that slow bending speed. Now that is when the press has full pressure. When it's in fast approach speed, it does not have full pressure. When it's really cold, sometimes it'll get hung up up there. You gotta let things warm up, get the juices flowing, it's cold out here. So you'll notice that it'll change speed and I'll show you that in a minute. And then also on here you have your upstroke stop, which tells it how far to come up. This machine will come up, has a four inch total stroke. I don't want it, I don't need it to come all the way up here. I just want it to come down bend and come up a little bit and then I can pull the part out. So we've got it set up. We've got all of that adjusted. I've got it to where I like it. I'll show you that in a second. This, this setup may look different on yours, but everything is gonna be the same. You're gonna have a top adjustment and a bottom adjustment. And that one is gonna be 
for the, the speed change, and then this is your upstroke stop. So, that is very important to set. If you're bending quarter inch or 14 gauge, you need to adjust that a little bit because you want that to slow down just as it comes to the top of the material, not slam into it. And I find, I find 2.00, is my happy place. You can experiment on yours, but I like it there. So I leave it at 2.00 almost all the time. So we'll go back over here into the program. We've got four steps. All right, here's step one. I've got my XP at 0.935 is the distance for this flange that I like. And then bend two, I like 1.435 so we come back up here 1.435 for bend 2 and then bend 3 we're going to come back to this flange and it's going to be bend 3 it's back to 0.935 for the second one of these we're going to start 1, 2, 3, 4 and then bend four, back to 1.435. So that's where I'm happy. That's where we're gonna run with it. And I'll get this set up and show you guys how it works. All right, so we put the machine in run mode just by clicking the green button, like you've seen in my other videos. And we're on step one, so let's hit that bend. Just double check here, yep. So, step one. I've got that bend. Nice and square. I'm just gonna, you always wanna keep a square and some digital calipers, or if you like manual ones, I'm lazy, I like digital, I'm a millennial, so sorry. But we're looking for one inch, and we have got 1.003, and in sheet metal tolerance of point, plus or minus 0.03 as being acceptable, 0.003 is super duper duper acceptable. So, super happy with that. So we're gonna hit bend two. You saw the fingers move back for bend two. So now it is at that other position. We're gonna hit the down. I believe we're looking for 1.5, so we are at 1.4925. So again, just a few thousandths of an inch off of my number when we have plus or minus 30 thousandths to work with in most sheet metal shops, so that's plenty good. So we're gonna just run these parts now. So you'll just watch, you can see the fingers moving back and forth. Here, I'll, I'll bring the camera in a little bit and you can just watch the magic.
Now it's a good idea to check, make sure we're still square. Everything looks nice there. Square. Make sure my numbers are happy. Oh yeah. And that's it. First part, last part. Looks pretty good to me. All right, so all set there. I'm pleased, I'm gonna turn the machine off. We're gonna go around to the back. After we turn it off, we're gonna kill the power here. And then I have a phase converter down here inside and I'm gonna turn that off also now you'll be able to hear me extra well but yeah there's our uh, there's our project for today I'm super pleased with it these parts came out great what do you think Kev pound it did we do good yeah we did good yeah we got these these done they look great nice and level I uh, yeah so We've got some finger dies and some other awesome tooling, this roll of e die set that I got. We're gonna delve into some more episodes. If, if you guys are on the lookout for a break, Tommy Industrial offers these with great financing options. You can hop on their website and actually any of their accessories, tooling, etc. you can hop on there and at this current moment you can use my last name and get you a little discount on some of those accessories you can buy right off the website. I'll leave some links below for any other information uh, just in case some of that stuff changes over time. But I'll leave, I'll leave the info down there and I hope to see you guys in the future. We're gonna really hit it hard in 2023. I got a lot of cool ideas. I'm working with a lot more cool companies now with a lot of awesome products and tools and from welding to the plasma table side to the press brake side. So I'm really excited for 2023. Uh, you guys help me out. If you hop in, use my name on some of these, these, these things I have discount codes for, puts a little bit of money in my pocket. I can keep doing this videotaping myself because let's face it, I just killed a big chunk of my afternoon trying to get all this set up for you instead of just coming here and making parts and making my money to pay my bills. So you guys help me out. I'll help you out. I'll give you more information. So until next time, hope you guys learned a little bit. This was press break basics. Maybe next time we'll get a little more complex. Later. Kevin, how do I get back to picture mode? I can't figure this camera out. Why can't I just hit the picture button, Kevin? Take the picture! Take the picture, Kevin! No, it's still recording. I don't know.